Imagine reading a book and visualizing all the scenes in your head. What a surreal experience. But the craft lies in bringing these alive on stage, not just for yourself, but for the audiences, doing justice to the text and opening up an entirely new spectrum of experiences. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of Jay Shah, Vice President and Head Cultural Outreach Mahindra Group, Team Book Arts, Art Gyan and the Meta Secretariat, welcome back to the Mahindra Excellence in Theatre Awards and Festival. Owing to the pandemic, we at Meta have also evolved and upgraded. And in 2020, we hosted a magnificent virtual Meta, including Indian Theatre's first ever virtual award show. In 2021, we continued our virtual curation and rather than a competition, we bring you a month and a half of the very best of Meta from the past 15 years as a special celebration of the stage. Last week, the curtains went up on our masterclasses curated on themes around the stage, backstage and beyond. Learnings at Meta is an extension of Meta's endeavor to nurture Indian theatre and build a community of practitioners dedicated to the craft. It is also aimed at enhancing public engagement with theatre and developing an appreciation for the multitude of skills and techniques involved in putting together quality theatre productions. This year, we brought to you a series of masterclasses with our online arts educational platform Art Gyan in partnership with Dikaji, our snacking partner. Artgyan is a web-based arts education platform striving to make the arts accessible and affordable to students across India and the world, while simultaneously providing professional artists with a structured platform to teach a wide network of learners. A very warm welcome to this masterclass of learnings at Meta. From page to stage, a masterclass on bringing the script to life. How does one ensure that the stage sets the right tone to translate the emotion of a written scene? From acting to directing, from lighting and set design to the right background score, this masterclass will focus on how different elements of a particular act are detailed out to bring each scene to life. Your mentor for the masterclass is none other than the brilliant and vivacious Saurabh Shukla. National award winner Saurabh Shukla is a celebrated actor, writer and director. He is famous for his roles in Satya, Slumdog Millionaire, Burfi, Jolly LLB, Kick, PK, Jolly LLB 2 and Raid. Shukla began serious theatre in 1986. His recent plays, Tutu Tango, Barf and Jab Khuli Kitab, which he wrote and directed, have been critically acclaimed at major theatre festivals in India. We have all seen and enjoyed his work on stage and off stage and remember him for the number of delightful and memorable characters that he has brought alive. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting to you from page to stage with Saurabh Shukla. Welcome, Saurabh. It's always a delight to welcome you at Meta, and this time it's extra special because Learnings at Meta is in collaboration with Art Gyan. So in today's masterclass, Page to Stage, Bringing the Script to Life, we'll talk about all the elements required to create a play. So an idea is conceived, how the idea becomes a story, story gets translated into a script, other factors come into play, including casting and rehearsals, and then things like stage design, light design, sound design, costume design comes to the picture, and after many technical rehearsals, magic is finally created on stage. And we'll talk about all of this, but before we get there, we'd love to know what is Saurabh Shukla's personal story of page to stage. How did Saurabh Shukla come into this medium, into theatre? Okay, first of all, thank you very much for calling me here. I always feel at home. Um, it's uh, it's pretty bad that, you know, uh, 2020, when I was about to come as a jury uh, to Delhi, you know, the pandemic hit and uh, we all had to go back to our places and it didn't happen but i'm very glad i'm i'm quite glad that you know uh, virtually we are back together and we are doing this so first of all congratulations for such a great effort and making me up thanks for making me a part of this okay uh, so uh, your thing is that uh, uh, a personal journey of saurabh shukla so i i i have said a lot of things about my journey in in different interviews which a lot of people know but i'll uh, still make a, a, a short, uh, you know, a, a story about it, that how it happened. So uh, to start with my family, I come from a family of artists and my parents were musicians. My father was a vocalist. My mother was a tabla player. And uh, so we had the, uh, the atmosphere of art at home. And art was not something which was looked at as a extracurricular activity or you know something not very important in life uh, so we were given all the freedom to practice all kinds of arts 
whatever we wanted to try. As a child, I remember, you know, I was encouraged for all these things. So I tried my hand in everything. I first wanted to be a painter and they said that my hand was very good in painting. But somehow then I lost interest as I grew up and I still paint, but I'm left with only two, three images, that's all. Um, another thing is that uh, we were slightly a different family. Uh, I remember because normally in the sunny home, what happens is that people have been watching the film for years, and in that time especially, uh, you know, for years, people didn't see uh, films in theater. So my friends used to watch, you know, uh, in four months or five months, one film, whereas in my family, uh, we always had a Sunday, every Sunday, we had one film, which is an English film in the morning and then in, and then a Hindi film in the evening. So by default, I, I grew up watching eight films in a month. And my brother was 10 years older than me. And uh, so he had freedom to watch four more films. Or being his uh, younger brother, I used to just tag along and uh, see at least one more film. So no, se das film mein mere paas thi. So obviously I had interest in films. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had this fascination about uh, making a film because I, whenever I watched a film, you know, it was like uh, sitting and looking through a window, which has a different world. And uh, a good film always sucks you in, they say. You know, it just takes you in that world. And I, I used to be really excited. And that was the biggest adventure as a child, I remember. So I always wanted to make a film. And I had no idea. I was in Delhi. Uh, Delhi had no connection with films. Um, so uh, from tabloids or whatever I, whatever I gathered, uh, the knowledge I gathered. So my brother had a Click3 camera, Akfa Click3 camera, which uh, was an old camera, a big camera. So I knew that how a film works because it's a series of frames. And when you run through a projector, you can have a film. So I came up with the most stupid idea, which my friends, I think they were even more stupid than me because they agreed on it. I said that if we keep buying rolls and if we keep clicking pictures for a year, then we can join all those rolls, all those negatives, and finally uh, we'll have a film. It's much later I realized that it's, films are not made that way because it's a continuous exposure of, of frames uh, in one go. But that idea gave us a new lease of life, you know, a new excitement, a new um, a, a purpose to live. And it was our secret purpose or, or the secret adventure. And we kept thinking about it and we were very excited to do it. Uh, but we didn't know how to do it. So me and my friends, we kept living this dream for a very long time. And slowly we realized that films are not made that way. And the dream of achieving a film was going further and further. And it was becoming impossible. But then we were lucky, video came. Uh, and we realized that there's something called a video camera and we can shoot a film. But still it was quite expensive. Uh, to hire a video camera. So a friend of mine told me when I was in college, my first year of college, he said, see, we do not have the money to make a film right now, but if we do theater, it has story, it has acting, it has lighting, it has all the elements which films have. So if we do that, we'll be at least, we'll be able to practice the art. And if we perfect that, so the day we'll have the money, we can hire a camera and shoot a film. It made sense. And I saw my first play. Actually, I started, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a small story about this. So I, I collected all my friends before I saw the first play of my life. I... <clears throat> collected all my friends, and I said, let's rehearse. So we were very excited that morning. We were in Delhi, Bounta Karke Jage Hai, I don't know what, Ridge, you know, 
दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी के पास तो वहां पर हम लोग एक मकबरा था उसमें हम लोग इकट्ठे हुए सुबह सुबह और वी ऑल वर एक्साइटेड दैट वी आर गोइंग टू डू समथिंग न्यू but nobody had an idea that what we are going to do and since i called them i called the meeting i had to you know start it so i said so by default i became the director so i said okay uh, let's um, rehearse they said what so i said uh, just any anything a conversation let's rehearse that so we started doing it and nobody everybody was shy also and they didn't know how to do it so i started putting logic and i said i said i i i was under the pressure to tell them something you know that that was the problem so i said okay i said tell me what is most important in theater so somebody said a story somebody said acting somebody said something and i had to come up with a new answer so i said boss the most important thing is actually audience so never ever turn your face from the audience so the first blocking i did i remember it was like this so imagine me like two people so uh, i am meeting sharma ji and i am varma ji so i'll say are sharma ji aap kahan par the aap milte nahi hai na sharma ji says are varma ji main to aata hu lekin aap nahi milte hain now the thing is that i am pointing the hand so sharma ji is standing here and varma ji is standing here but we are not looking at each other we are looking at the audience and it was really funny and it was really stupid i felt it is stupid but i had no other answer luckily that sunday that weekend i went to shriram center and i happened to see a play called the glass menagerie by tennessee williams it was played by a group called drama tech i think it is still there yeah. it was a wonderful performance and the great thing was i loved the play i loved the story i loved everything it was my first experience of watching a live play the amazing thing was that nobody was looking at the audience the characters were looking at each other and talking and that was wonderful it felt real so monday you know when we met again mm-hmm. i said so now you have learned the first principle now the time has come to break the principle so don't look at the audience look at each other and talk and that's how we started and uh, i did my first play uh, as an amateur play uh, at the college level uh, and it became it was liked by a lot of people you know so same thing when people like you you will start liking yourself you know and that's how my initial journey to theater started but now let me come to the detailing of the master class and as i mentioned before that today uh, we'll talk about all the elements of page to stage uh, so from a thought to an idea to a story to a script and then from right casting to rehearsals and then sound design light design stage design costume design and finally showcasing it so let's divide it uh, the set to three parts for our learners uh, so starting with the first segment you know so from a mere thought to a full fledged play script what's the journey like please share and elaborate about the process for our learners so um, okay well um, okay i'll i'll try and put it together i it's like a journey uh, it's like any journey uh and uh, more spontaneous it is it is better so you know uh, i am not a great fan of uh, you know uh, that planned holidays you know where you plan for a year and you check everything and you you are absolutely sure about the hotel and the rooms and everything and then what time the car is going to pick you up it's boring okay so i like journeys which are on impulse that you reach somewhere and then you find something and then you make sense out of it or you start enjoying that particular journey so for me it has been a journey like this similarly stories are also like that for me they are not that something which i think that you know first i i don't start with that do i have to something 
Do, do I have, really have to say something to the world which the world needs to hear? You know, it's it's nothing like that. It's it's something which strikes you. It might be an incident, you know, and that incident does not need to be socially relevant, relevant. You know, it, you can't put it really, oh, it says about this part of the society. No, you just like it. You know, you just like it. So there is one name which will keep uh, coming in this whole conversation is uh, is my play Burf. So uh, Burf says a lot of things that people who have seen it, uh, you know, uh, they, they figure out layers in it and everything. But how it started uh, was the very simple basic idea of a situation that a doctor goes to um, treat a child and it turns out to be that the child is not a human baby, it's a doll. So I found it fascinating. I found it bizarre, I found it funny, I found it dark, I found it thrilling. So I said, oh, there, there can be a story like this, you know? Uh, and it, it makes a, a good story, I mean, because it's, you don't know where it is gonna go. And that's how it starts. So I'll, I'll go back uh, to, to the point. So an idea comes, you think, and you like that idea, and you see a possibility of extending that idea into a story. In my case, uh, because I write films and I write theater, so approximately, uh, you know, 90 minutes to a two-hour idea. You know, can it take the journey? Can this journey be a two-hour long journey? Or a, or a 90 minute journey. That's how you think. And then you start constructing. Um, so usually, uh, I the way I write, I don't decide things well in advance. I know that this is the arc. So I have to start from here and reach here. But the route is not decided. So I start writing rather than there are there are different uh, you know schools of working there are different uh, ways of working on on a story like some some people say that sit down figure out your story and then divide it into sections and then divide it into a screenplay and then into the scenes and the movement of the scenes and the structure and finally reach where you want to reach again it's like booking uh, the hotel room well in advance. So what I do is that I start the journey and then one scene leads to another scene, another scene leads to another scene, okay? I am following an arc, which I know, but at the same time, these scenes might start demanding some other path, some other pointers. And that's how I, I, I find a lot of things in the story when I finish it, that I did not think of many things, but they came on their own and they made their own place. This is what I, my process is. And I'll not say that it fits everyone, but it really, really works for me. That's how it happens. Another thing I, will, I would like to point out here, this is, I think, much later in life I realized. Why do you tell stories? Why? Uh, so the answer I could find, because I want to tell about my life. You know, so every story is an experience of my life. The story might not be from my life, but the journey of the story actually comes from my life. What I have seen, what I have felt, what I have imagined, so it's my expression, what I want to say. They always say, you know, art is, is an expression. It's okay. a personal expression. So what is that expression? It's you. You talk about yourself. You talk about what you think. You talk about your highs, your lows, your betrayals, your complexes, uh, the way you see the world, the way you want to see the world. You know, everything you reflect. 
and i think that is what is wonderful and that's how some and and more than the story actually this is what gets connected with people that's how they start identifying the story they start relating the story from their life and i think that that is what is pretty much the process of writing for me how important you think is to write a uh, read to write and let me clap two more questions there with this so which was the first play you read or which was the first uh, yeah not story but the first play you read and which author or playwright has created an impact on you and why okay so i'll go one by one is it important to read to write of course it is but reading does not mean reading you read you can read by watching you can read by experiencing read does not only mean that you pick up a book and keep reading it because i know a lot of people who read but didn't understand it it is just mere words you know whereas what the writer is trying to say so i always had this i have a very bad memory uh, uh you know i can't remember names i can't remember titles i can't really it is quite surprising that when i meet somebody and i'm not talking about all uh, but when i meet somebody who can keep throwing names you know who says that you know that director he was there in 1946 somewhere and it was happening in so this is all google this is all data i am not concerned with that and i'll tell you an experience about this in, in this in the stock right now uh, what the text you have read or what the film you have seen or what the production you have seen has made an impact on you and how you have read it that's how i remember things so i was doing my first major play miller katha uh, a view from the bridge okay i loved it i was doing it great story great dramatics great characterizations relationships everything was very nice we did the play and it became super famous in that time and everybody said ki what layers they have brought out and we realized it was against mccarthy committee and i had no idea what the hell is mccarthy committee because i didn't know the american history so uh, a view from the bridge was written twice so first he wrote a short play then he made it into a a, a big play finally a full length play and he wrote it against mccarthy committee because mccarthy committee was uh, you know this whole uh, thing about uh, immigrants and, and and they were going heavy on you know finding out and and isolating them and everything so miller's whole thing was a human you a human point of view about the whole process that what is happening i had no idea i saw it from a man's point of view uh, whose whose relationship how is his relationship with his wife with his niece uh, people who have come from there you know from outside world his neighborhood everything but not mccarthy committee later i read about mccarthy committee and now i know about it so the point is ki i got a unforgettable uh, sense if i would have read it in google there was no google that time but if i would have read it in in books and everything uh, you know then it would have remained a theory it would have been theoretical it was heartfelt i cried with the play i i felt with the play i you know i moved with the play so that's what i say so when you say how important is reading yes it is very important and by the way i can't read i can hardly read i do not on on paper when i start reading it is very difficult now especially for me i read when i was younger 
but I've lost that habit. I can't read. But if I can't read, then what happens? So I tell you, what do I do? So if I met you, and you said that Henry the Fourth, that was what a wonderful play. Now I can't read the play. So the first thing I'll do is that I'll sit with you for hours and I'll hear the whole story and I'll try and make a sense out of it and I will try and analyze it. That's how I read. So whenever I come to Delhi and whenever I, when I come to Meta and when I meet my old friends in NSD and, and other places, I just sit with them and I say, yeah, I want to listen to that story. You know, what was the story? What was so important in that? And why was it? So it's also reading, right? Right. right. So that is, so that's what I will say. So this is the first part of uh, your thing. The first play I read uh, was when I was uh, in my first year college. So, uh, uh, so usually I didn't read books. I didn't read the textbooks. I didn't read the time. There was a thing called Kunji. Right, right. right. So basically all my sons right. so, so, उसका जो की था वो अवेलेबल नहीं था वो बड़ी कोशिश की और मैं समझ में नहीं आ रहा यार क्या करे क्या करे और कुछ तो क्वेश्चन आएगा ही आएगा उससे तो गड़बड़ हो जाएगी तो मैं एक दिन बैठा मैंने कहा यार चलो हटाओ पढ़ ही लो इसको यार किसी तरीके से तो मैं पढ़ने बैठा एंड आई वाज रियली स्कैर्ड एक तो पढ़ना पड़ रहा ऊपर से आप प्ले व्हिच आई नेवर रेड बिफोर मेरा पढ़ना शुरू किया एंड इन टू पेजेस इट ग्रिप्ड मी इट वाज लाइक अ थ्रिलर because uh, Miller ki writing mein ye bada hai. You know, it's bahut hi, uh, political plays unhone likhe hai, aur hi, uh, socially relevant plays hai, but they're not boring. They move like thrillers. Right. Ki, now what? What will happen now? The element of suspense, the element of what's going to happen next is great. And it was like reading, sorry, I'm comparing the two, two writers. I should not. Uh, but in my time, the most famous writer was James Edley Chase. You know, uh, uske novels pad pad ke to, uske to novel because they were fluent, they were exciting, they were thrilling. Or Miller, jo de, wo, wo usme aate de, literary category, mein aate de. To literary categories, hum log baagte de. So, लेकिन ये पढ़ा मैंने कहा यार ये तो लिटरेरी कैटेगरी में भी ऐसा लिखा जाता है तो कमाल का लिखा हुआ है सो आई लव दैट प्ले एंड इट मूव्ड मी इट इट एक्साइटेड मी इट इट वाज थ्रिलिंग बट एंड एट द एंड व्हाट इट सेस यू नो इट्स मच मच बिगर सो आई थिंक दैट आई कंप्लीटली फेल इन लव एंड आई आई रेड इट नंबर I think in my writing, uh, if you say that whose impact I have, there are two writers definitely. Um writer bhi jinka maine jab pehla padha tha, to same same reaction tha mera jaisa Miller ke saath tha. To Miller ek hai jinka bahut impact hai meri writing pe. Main Miller ki tarah likhta hu ki nahi likhta hu. That's a separate thing. Uh, lekin uh, uh, Miller ka impact bahut hai. Aur dousre hai Mohan Rakesh. Mohan Rakesh, uh, mujhe uh, natakon mein natakieta jo kehte hain, wo uh, kabhi bahut zada mujhe, uh, mein usko bahut zada appreciate nahi kar pa hai. Mainne aadhe adhore pada, I actually You know, it was that fluid. And that's what really I really admired. And again, it was a very complex play. 
which over the years, when I read it again and again and again, I understood the layers of it. But in the first read, it was a great read. So I think that these two writers uh, are my, uh, I would say that they have the most impact on my writing. For our learners over here, let me ask you another question. How technical know-how, uh, I mean, how important is to have technical know-how to write a script as in format, etc. Or do you think you what you majorly need is creativity? So um, again, um, uh, it's not as simple as that. I mean, you really can't simplify it in one way or the other. Your technical know-how has two layers. Technical know-how is one thing, like I tell you script writing, it's very simple, hota hai, film writing. Ka. If anybody wants to write a film script, then the first thing goes is whether it is an interior sequence. So you write INT, dot, then you write the location, Saurabh's room, then dash dash, and you write what time of day. That's your heading. That's the first thing you write. Okay. Then you write the action that Saurabh was inside. He was talking on the Zoom and whatever. And you describe that the light was falling from the, this thing and whatever, whatever, whatever. Then the next thing you write is the character's name, Saurabh. And then what Saurabh is saying. And after that, when your scene is over, you write the transition, cut to or fade out or dissolve to. This is the technical part of it. You don't need to know more than this to write a script. But this technical, this technical part is not going to complete a script. Now the technical part is that how it moves? What do you talk? How does it, you know, uh, join together in a script, each scene? That comes by reading. And by reading again, I mean watching, observing, everything. Not just by reading a book on screenplay. So by the way, I've not read a single book on screenplay. I know about uh, a couple of uh, screenplay books and their principles and the three act structure and everything. But this I have gathered over a period of time and by experience. So by watching films, if you want to make films, then by watching it, that what all people have done, you know, how they have constructed scenes, how they have written scenes without dialogues, you know, on the moment. So that, that is for films, same goes for theater. So if you watch more of theater and you observe it, and if you talk to people, you know, it, it talking really does wonders, you know, in today's time, Suraj, if I really miss, I was missing it uh, in this new setup this new world, and this is becoming more prominent with the pandemic, we don't meet anymore. We don't waste our time. And whatever I know is by wasting my time. This is what people said, is wasting the time, sitting, having a cup of tea, talking randomly about things. It by unknowingly, you know, you keep collecting the knowledge and not in a, in a constructed way, not in a, in a designed way. You know, I am sitting here for next two hours, I have to gather knowledge. That is painful. You know, knowledge should be there all the time. You know, you should laugh, you should have, you know. So all my years in theater, I used to reach Monday house at seven in the morning. And I used to go back home around 12 in the night. It is what? It is like some 17 hours. What did we do? We were not all the time reading or not all the time. We were laughing. We were just walking. We were just, you know, uh, 
watching everything we were doing and we were doing stupid things also because stupid things are very important to be a human being you know so that that gives you the experience of life we were having uh, heartaches breakups you know also we were thinking about movements what is happening in bihar what is happening in syria we don't know about it so but somebody told us and that's how that's how you you know the knowledge was passing from one place to another place and that's what we are missing so just by sitting just by reading a book which is very focused on telling you how to write is not going to do the wonders the life is going to do the wonders right so live life right so that i mean i mean i think that's the power of uh, of of theater addas what we call uh, sort of right we get in a chai or samosa pe play ban jate hain aur stories ban jati hain so i think that's that's what you're talking about uh, yeah. uh, let, let me because you've spoken a lot about how basically you work uh, in the spontaneous fashion so let me just ask you about this also that what do you think that how the conventional way of writing scripts has, has evolved in the past few years or decades or how is it evol- evolving at the moment and how you as a writer also cater to the evolving audience each time so it's quite a wide question um uh, i would mostly focus on the way i wrote so uh, to tell uh, the audience here i have been writing now since last 35 years uh which is uh, i would say organized writing uh before that i'm not counting but 35 years i think that i must have written my first play 35 years back or maybe even before that uh i have tried every kind every form of writing how to write so uh i kept kept trying uh, my hands in everything so like they say like i initially when we were talking i i told you that there is a way that you think of an idea the idea comes then you start building a story on the idea and then you start dividing the idea into the story and after the after that the story you start breaking down into scenes which is the play or the screen play you know uh and then what is happening within the scene uh what are what, what is it that you are talking about and that's how you this is a basic structure that's how you are supposed to write they say uh i i did that also uh but as i said that i got bored that if i knew everything before actually writing it then what is the point then i so my quest to find something you know is already satisfied oh structurally i have found everything which is not the truth so i i i chose for myself i i chose this journey uh, there are there are many ways i i would like to tell you uh, an interesting uh, project which i did here so i think in 2009 or 2010 uh i was suddenly i got a call from fdii and the students called me and they said ki uh, can you take a workshop for us so i said okay uh, so i went there it was a seven day long workshop and uh, the first day i remember we sat down it was around uh, 9 9 o'clock when we sat and i said bhai apna naam batao you know some logon ne apna ek dusre ka naam waam bataya and then i said ki listen i really can't start giving you a lecture because i don't like giving lectures uh if anything you want to know uh let me know let's have a conversation so so they started asking questions so they asked me that how do you work so i said how do i work man i i i get a work and i i just do it so they said no but what's your process so i said listen i don't think that i completely know my process because i'm still under the process i'm not over the process so they said but how do you prepare your characters so i said how do i prepare my characters mane i do not when i get a character it's not that i sit down and i start writing what happens to the character i don't work that way i start relating with the character that what all has happened in my life which is relatable with this character's life 
and here comes my life. So 35 years of me in theater or in art uh, comes into play. So all of that was going on. So the conversation went on till 11 o'clock. And at 11 o'clock, I was bored. Listen, how do we prepare a character if we do not get a script well in advance? So I said, what is well in advance? So they said, okay, you know, we must get a script at least three months beforehand. And I said, okay. Uh, and they said, so I said, uh, they said that uh, so that we can get information about the character, what we are playing. So I said, uh, the information is all there in the script, whatever that script is. So information about your character is always there. So they said, but at times there are so many badly written texts that you can't find anything in it. So I said, okay. 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 So I said, I can't talk so much. Let's do one thing. We have two hours. लंच में दो घंटे हैं उसके बाद आधे घंटे का लंच है तो ढाई घंटे यानी डेढ़ बजे विल स्टार्ट मेकिंग अ फिल्म तो दे सेड व्हाट फिल्म सो आई सेड द फिल्म व्हिच वी डोंट नो सो गेट मी अ कैमरामैन एंड जस्ट प्रिपेयर अ रूम अ हाउस और सम 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 सेट एंड आई सेड अनदर थिंग एक एक्सरसाइज है व्हिच इज रैंडम राइटिंग so the writing goes this way i'll just tell you thoda sa explain karunga main isko ye jo exercise hoti hai ye group mein ki jati hai aur 10 15 log baithte hain aur aap ek koi ek word ya koi ek sentence bolte hain so like you say paper and rest of the 15 people their pen is on the paper the moment they hear paper they start writing. The first word does not need to be paper or it, the whole writing might not be about the paper. But you just keep writing because one word starts a flow of thoughts and you're not supposed to think. You're not supposed to pause in between. You're just supposed to write. And you do this exercise for approximately two minutes, not more than that. So two minutes, you just keep writing. You just keep writing, just keep writing, just keep writing. And it tells you, it's quite amazing. It tells you a lot of things about yourself. You know, when you read it, in retrospect, it tells you a lot of things. So I gave them the line, I said, a conversation between a man and a woman. So I said, just give me dialogues between man and woman. So 15 children. So 15 children have written. And someone has written a page, someone has डेढ़ पेज लिखे किसी ने प्रोस्टिट्यूट और क्लाइंट के बारे में लिखा किसी ने मदर सन के बारे में लिखा किसी ने ब्रेकिंग रिलेशनशिप के बारे में लिखा किसी ने मेकिंग रिलेशनशिप के बारे में लिखा किसी ने लेमेंट के बारे में लिखा ऐसा बहुत सारा हुआ तो मैंने कहा जब हो गया सारा तैयार हो गया तो मैंने कहा काम करो सबका तैयार है बोले हां मैंने कहा इसमें से पहली पहली लाइन जो है ना सब लोग निकाल तो जो पहली लाइन आदमी की होगी नेक्स्ट वाला जो जो पहली लाइन औरत की होगी वो निकालेगा तो ऐसा कहना ठीक है तो हमने उसको लिखना शुरू किया तो लिख के हमने ऐसे एक लाइन में लिख दिया आदमी का डायलॉग औरत का डायलॉग आदमी का डायलॉग औरत का डायलॉग अलग-अलग लोगों का तो मैंने कहा सुनो इससे खराब स्क्रिप्ट तो हो नहीं सकती बिकॉज़ इट हैज कम आउट ऑफ नथिंग सेकंडली देयर इज नो टाइम we do not, we have not got any preparation time. I said, let's work on it. Let's make sense out of it. And let's search while we are doing it. So, I will tell you the first scene. The first scene was like that. The man said, okay, I'm making tea. Do you want some? And the dialogue was like, will it be raining in Calcutta? आदमी का डायलॉग आता है वेयर हैव आई केप्ट द कीज औरत का डायलॉग आता है आई शुडंट बी हियर फिर आदमी का डायलॉग आता है दैट्स नॉट द एंड 
फिर औरत का डायलॉग आता है देयर ऐसा कुछ रैंडम सा था तो मैंने कहा भाई ये सीन हम करने जा रहे हैं ये बताओ ये सीन क्यों हो रहा है एंड देखे हम अपने दिस आइडिया एक लड़का बोला कि सर ये हस्बैंड वाइफ है किसी पार्टी में गए थे रात को आदमी ने दारू ज्यादा पी थी एंड शीज एंड ही मस्ट बी फूलिंग अराउंड और डूइंग समथिंग वाइफ इज पेस्ट सो पहली जो लाइन है वो अपॉलिजिटिक लाइन है एंड इज ट्राइंग टू मेक अ ब्रिज एंड सेज आई एम मेकिंग सम टी डी वन सम गुड मेक सेंस बट वाई शी सेंग इज ए ट्रेनिंग इन कैलकटा तो एक लड़की बोली कि सर सर मेरे ख्याल से दो साल पहले she went in a art camp in calcutta and she had an affair with another fellow artist which they haven't talked about now they don't talk about it but this is the simmering thing in their relationship and she is hitting him with that why is it great so the second guy so he says ki i'm making some tea do you want some and she says that will it be raining in calcutta i said why why is the third line where have i kept the keys एक्सरसाइज फॉर अ वीक to cut the long story short i learned a lot of things from this film so also what happened because there were 15 students so mujhe sabko chance dena tha to chalte dialogue mein camera maine simple rakha tha over the shoulder over the shoulder to main kya karta tha ki aadhe dialogue ke beech mein iska dialogue khatam hua to ladka change kar deta tha fir ladki change kar deta tha सीन वही चलता रहता था ऐसे करके मैंने वो इट वाज रैंडम तो शुरू में मुझे ये लग रहा था कि यार लोगों को कैसे पता लगेगा ये वही आदमी है शक्ल तो चेंज हो गई तो कपड़े तो काले रखो कम से कम पूरे जैसे इसने तो कपड़े चेंज करवा रहा था मैं आफ्टर पॉइंट आई सेड व्हाट इज दिस स्टूपिडिटी यार बंदा ही चेंज हो गया तो कपड़े चेंज हो गए तो क्या फर्क पड़ता है सो वी जस्ट रैंडमली केप्ट शूटिंग द इंटरेस्टिंग थिंग अबाउट इट आई शोड इट टू अप्रोक्सीमेटली 10000 people none of them said it's not the story of two people though there were 15 faces in that film they said it's one it's like two people the girl and the boy that is one secondly that film finally went into uh, sorry uh, i thought it was new york film festival no it was not new york film festival it was la short film festival la short film festival and it won the best screenplay award there wow. so it came out of so the point was it was again a journey where you want to figure out and this is what i really like about stories that you figure it out you know it's not something which you tell it's you figure out and telling is a by the way activity it by the way goes to the audience and they are also figuring out <coughs> this is what i think so sir we've spoken about we covered the first segment of our master class so now let's move on to the next segment of our master class page to stage casting and rehearsals so sir now we we have got the script talk to us about the casting and rehearsals and the whole process of that okay so um again there are two answers for that uh one is uh once you have completed the script so you have a character or characters you know uh then the people you know the actors you know their work uh then you choose accordingly okay you know uh, their plus points uh how much they are similar to uh to the character which you have written uh that's how it goes uh but that is not the ideal situation that uh, in real life it does not happen that way so you take another path so for example if uh 
you have written Macbeth, correct? Uh, and uh, fortunately, unfortunately, you have only Saurabh Shukla who has agreed to work with you. So how will, do you think that Saurabh Shukla can pull off Macbeth? That's an interesting thing. You know, so that's how mostly we go about it. It's not always, you know, my character look like that and the other actor looks like this. The other actor might be busy or might not be interested in working with you. So you take an actor who's there, who's willing to invest, who's willing, uh, who's interested in that. And the person who's interested will do more wonders rather than somebody who might be looking like that character, but is not interested. So that is that is the very first principle I follow. So if I get an actor who's interested in a, in a role and fits somehow, you know, some things I, I figure out that he can pull off this character, then we go. Because it's again a journey. Because the, otherwise, if, if, if I get the actor who exactly is like the character, then what about I have to do nothing then? I have nothing to do for the next one month of rehearsal or whatever. So it's a journey we start and we stumble upon different things and then we clear our thoughts, we maneuver through the script and that is wonderful because that is when actually script starts getting layers. Because there is another mind, there is somebody who has come with a shortcoming or something which is quite key to the character is already there, you know, things like that. So you, so my casting process is very much like that. That I, I look for an actor who's interested in the work and I, in my standards, he's a capable actor and that's how I work. Uh, rest is a journey, rehearsals. So uh, I'll, I'll give you an example. So uh, I did this play Barf. And doing plays in Bombay is quite a difficult thing uh, because it's a it's an expensive city. It's a uh, everybody is working. You know, you really can't tell people to leave everything and just do theater for the next one month or whatever. You might be lucky, but you know, it does not happen all the time. You have to take care of your people. You cannot really tell them, okay, listen, don't work. So how are they going to pay the rent or run their life, you know? So when we were doing this play, I went to Vinay. I went to Vinay. So I listened to Vinay Pathak. Vinay loved it. Vinay said, I will do it. So he was an interested actor. And he's a very good actor. So I was like, I couldn't be happier. But I had this doubt. I said, no, it won't happen. It won't Because I have to present this play uh, in Baharangam. And I have only two months. And I need rehearsals. So how will rehearsal? I said, no, we'll do it. We'll adjust it. I said, how will we do it? You're doing it in the film. Then you're doing it in the plays. Then how will it happen? So this is the three characters. So I called three of them. We want to do this. I said, you want to do this, but abhi to bol rahe ho, baad mein kaise hoga? To mere to, phir mujhe ek vaida karo. That you'll wake up at five in the morning. And these were winters. I said, you wake up at five or whatever time you want to wake up, I don't care. But be there at the rehearsal space at 5.30 in the morning. और साढ़े पांच बजे रिहर्सल शुरू होगी और मुझे रोज तीन घंटे की रिहर्सल चाहिए तो साढ़े आठ बजे मैं वायदा करता हूं मैं तुम लोगों को फ्री कर दूंगा उसके बाद लाइफ तुम्हारी है आई सेड द ओनली वे आई सी दिस वर्किंग इज दिस अब सब लोग नींद से उठते ही काम पे जान नहीं सकते हैं लोगों को टाइम लगता है किसी को एक घंटा लगता है किसी को आधा घंटा लगता है सो दे यूज टू वेक अप जैसे मुझे विनय ने बताया कि वो रात को असल में सोता बहुत लेट है 
वो कोई दो ढाई बजे सोता था तो उसने अपनी आदत सुधारी वो दस बजे सोने लगा फिर वो तीन बजे का अलार्म लगाता था फिर वो साढ़े तीन बजे दोबारा उठता था फिर पौने चार बजे का अलार्म लगाता था फिर उठता था करते करते वो चार बजे तक चार साढ़े चार बजे तक उठ जाता था फिर उसको थोड़ा टाइम लगता था फिर वो करते करते साढ़े पांच बजे बेसिकली पहुंचना ना दैट वॉज वंडरफुल बिकॉज द एफर्ट विच वॉज गोइंग इन टू इट मेड अ प्रोमिस दैट यू हैव अ टीम विच वॉन्ट्स टू अचीव सम हाउ एनी हाउ एंड दैट वॉज वंडरफुल और कमाल की बात उसमें ये थी सूरज बर्फ इज एक्चुअली in an environment it is actually set in kashmir in in uh, winters in an isolated place to hum log jab rehearsal pe pahunchte the to sari duniya so rahi hoti thi and there was no sound so the very first day of rehearsal i remember the first dialogue they spoke it sounded as if it was there you know and that was wonderful the whole rehearsal space got converted into a space of of the play you know jo jagah thi that secluded place in the middle of winters in in kashmir and it was a great experience of two months we did that so uh, casting mein i would always say uh, ki work with a person who's interested rather than you are interested in the person but the person is not interested this is what i think is the best i think it's very <laughs> very important from the uh, or the mantra uh, uh, sort of what you have what you have suggested and discussed uh, sort of let me ask you this i know for the fact that you truly believe in the mantra of interrelationship of parts so you suggest act to write and write to act so tell us more about this okay um so it's a simple principle of life if you think about yourself then you are not just one thing you are a lot of things okay um you are a commerce man also you are a scientist also you are an artist you are a sports person you are a father you are a son you know you're a friend you're enemy to somebody so you play lots of parts in life and everything you know which is there in your palette of life makes you react in one way in whichever situation you are you know so if if you are a friend then you're also an enemy to somebody so that enemy part doesn't go anywhere it actually in a layer works as a friendship also my friendship with somebody you know so ye sari cheeze hoti hain similarly we i i i very genuinely believe uh, suraj as human beings we all live in cocoons it's my very strong belief so i do not really believe in the reality because when two people talk they say that do you know the reality so the person who's saying it he's talking about his or her reality rather than the person who's listening because that person's reality can be different and will be different we just say it because it is our reality at that moment so we are in cocoons but at the same time these cocoons are not made of plastics they are porous so your experience your reality seeps into my reality and i form another reality you know and that is what is the beauty of life similarly in art so i'll i'll add one more thing so this is a common question which people have asked me who is a good actor who is a bad actor uh, is uh, are, are theater actors better actors in cinema this is a very common question actor is an actor he's just an actor you know then how come one actor is better in cinema it actually happens and one actor is better in theater and not so good in cinema 
or a cinema actor is not so good in theater. It keeps happening. Why does that happen? So the answer I found, or I think, is when you are acting, if you're not acting in isolation, you're acting in a medium. So how much do you know the medium? So cinema likes what? Does it constantly like to see your face all the time? No, it doesn't. It likes to see images. It likes images rather than hearing constantly what is being said. Because cinema has so many tools to say things, you know, so as, as we are talking, when they will edit, and when you're nodding, if, they, if, if my voice is overlapped on your nodding, it makes complete sense. You know, so this is a this is the requirement of a medium. So if you know the medium well, then you become a better actor for that medium. So that's why I always say, if you want to become a good theater actor, then know what theater is, what the medium is. Now, when you say what the medium is, it's not just medium, boss. You have to then know everything about it. You have to know uh, the limitations of it and not theoretically, but practically. So how do you, how do you read a script? My first question is, how do you read a script? How do you understand a script if you don't know how to write? Because if you write, then only you understand from where the writer is coming from. Or what the director is trying to tell you, how will you understand if you do not know direction? So you might not direct, but if you understand it, if you have the sense of direction, it will make you a better actor. And same thing goes for a writer. That if you are writing lines and you don't know what are the problems of an actor in, 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 in rendering that, then you will end up writing something and finally you will hear the actor, I'm talking about here? You know, so th these are common problems. So we should not do things in isolation. Look, what is it? very common tradition. All great actors at some point of time end up making films. You know, they become directors, they become writers. And they do it well, because they understand what, what the actors, and they make films about actors. Mostly actors, even they are they're, they're more about acting oriented, character oriented. So, this is zaruri hai. Now, you might say, Arey yaar, main painting jaan ke kya karunga? Main to actor hoon. Arey bhai, painting nahi jaan hoge, to images nahi jaan hoge. Images ki samaj nahi aayegi tumhe. Ki bhai, aadha dikhta hua bhi pura dikhta hai. Ye kaise samaj mein aayega? Agar aapko music nahi aata hai, to jis rhythm ki aap baat karte hai scene mein, जिस बीट की आप बात करते हैं सीन में वो क्या है वो रिदमिक है वो कहां पर उसका ऑडनेस भी जो है वो रिदमिक होता है वो कैसे आप पकड़ते हैं उसका पल्स को कैसे पकड़ते हैं दीस आर द थिंग्स एंड दैट्स व्हाई आई से कि बॉस जो है सब करो फाइनली तुम्हें लिखना नहीं है बट यू मस्ट हैव द सेंस ऑफ राइटिंग यू मस्ट हैव द सेंस ऑफ डायरेक्शन यू मस्ट हैव सेंस ऑफ कॉस्ट्यूमिंग मेकअप setting, what is the world around you? How will you see it? If you're just a, in isolation, you're an actor, you don't have any difference. You're in this camera, you're in this camera, you're in this camera. It's a difference, friends. I will react to that. You know, I, your environment, everything has to come into play. And that's why I say, so, like I play sports, I play table tennis. But you know, I play cricket, but you'll be surprised to know that most of the cricketers they play table tennis. It's for the reflexes. They play tennis for covering the area. They play badminton for the stretches. They do gym. Gym to gym for the muscles. 
they do running they are not sprinters but they do running why so understand if you are a sportsman you cannot tell your coach ki listen sir main to cricketer hu main to sir bowler hu main to ball hi phenkunga wo bole jao pehle 20 chakkar laga ke aao daud laga pehle daud laga ke us stadium ke hai na aapko laga ke daud daud ke kya karunga mujhe to char kadam chalna hai main to spinner hu char kadam chal ke main to ball kar dunga khatam ho gayi ball no it's not like that so everything is interrelated and it makes you rich and it it grows your understanding and that's why i say interrelationship of art is very very important and that's the reason sort of that you're a fabulous director fantastic actor and 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 an excellent uh, playwright so and and of course a great great artist in every sense so thank you uh, so much main ye recording rakhne wala hu main bar bar chalaunga is recording <laughs> sirf is comment ke liye <laughs> aapko specially bhej denge ye wala segment ka <laughs> <laughs> it's sort of so in our audience today there i'm sure there are a lot of actors and aspiring actors as well so and i'm sure they want to know that how do you get into the skin of a character how do you do that yaar pehli baat to ye hai main tumhe bataun ye uh of course i i i get into a character but more than the character again the principle is same i get into the skin of myself the more characters i do i realize more about myself because the character is an excuse to search my life and see what i have missed or what i have overlooked and it's all there it's all there hardly characters which are very difficult for me uh there are only two characters i can think uh which actually gave me sleepless nights otherwise i just search my life and i relate with it i might not be doing the same action what the character is doing but i might have gone through the similar gamut of emotions in some other context which i can equate with this and that is what it is so getting into the skin of the character is not actually you're getting into the skin of somebody else you're getting in the skin of yourself and that is for me is is a great journey i get very excited oh i'll figure out something about myself so now let me come to the third and the final segment of page to stage uh, masterclass when the role of all designers i mean the stage light sound costume etc come into play so at what point sort of you involve them and if there is any specific order and we are talking about stage designer light designer sound engineer costume uh, designer so just talk us through this process of theater making so uh, okay uh, so i'll tell you that uh, my technical team is uh, pretty small that way uh, because i have uh, known a designer For the similar time, जैसे मैं प्रीति को तब से जानता हूँ उसी टाइम से मैं राघव प्रकाश मिश्रा हूँ Uh, in between there was a gap when i was not doing theater per se uh, but 2011 onwards whenever i did so he has been my designer and he designs my sets and he designs the lights of it uh, i when i work so i have an idea of what exactly what i what i'm looking at or what i want सो सेट क्या होना चाहिए क्या उसकी फीलिंग होनी चाहिए क्यों होना चाहिए क्या करता है वो ये मुझे उसका अंदाजा होता है तो मैं जब राघव से बात करता हूं तो मैं बहुत क्लैरिटी से बात करता हूं उससे कि यार मेरे को इस कहानी का ये है और ये चीज जो है मुझे इसमें चाहिए एंड देन हिज टेक्निकल नॉलेज एंड हिज सेंसिबिलिटी कम्स इन and usme bhi hamare uh, agreements and disagreements hote hain obviously but then we are we, we are walking towards one you know uh, destination uh, that is pretty much the thing uh, lighting uh, mai usko zyada nahi bolta hu 
क्योंकि वो उसका कंप्लीटली उसका ही एरिया है लेकिन उसमें भी चॉइसेस होती है सो फॉर एग्जांपल इफ आई वांट अ मोनोटोन्स में अगर मेरे को चाहिए प्ले so then i will say ki no don't use this particular color in the this thing because i want monotones okay uh so ye ye cheeze i think a director again has to know what he wants and how to achieve it he can't do it but again i'm saying yahan par wahi aa jata hai you know combination of arts isi le aata hai because then you know ki acha ek uh, sharp light ka kya effect hota hai hai na एक बैकलाइट का क्या इफेक्ट होता है साइड लाइट का क्या इफेक्ट होता है हाउ शार्प द लाइट शुड बी और हाउ सॉफ्ट द लाइट शुड बी ये सेंस आपको होना चाहिए तो ये आपको धीरे धीरे पूछ पूछ के ही पता लगता है या देख देख के पता लगता है दैट इज प्रिटी मच द सेट एंड दिस थिंग कॉस्ट्यूम आई ऑलवेज डिस्कस विद माई एक्टर्स एंड देन ऑफकोर्स वी ब्रिंग अ डिजाइनर एंड द डिजाइनर पुट्स हिज अ हब views about the things and and we take it forward again it's a it's a group activity in which the i think that the costumes more than actors nobody can know because they're living it they're living the character so they know what they're wearing you know so i always give uh, this to them music i usually whenever there is a recorded music i always um, choose my music so but then also there is an art of uh you know playing that piece how do you play it what volumes do you play it you know how much you play it so all of that so then you need a sensible person and i i'm lucky that i've got a couple of very good people who could do that so that's pretty much that then you have a backstage team where you need dedicated people you know um who can do their job and not feel dissatisfied because backstage uh can be very dissatisfying you might think that i'm neither on the stage nor am i i'm just providing things but that providing is the most important key in theater that one must know so we do take care of them we give them the sense of pride and actually tell them that what they do so that is i think i think that's really important sort of what you spoke about because you know sometimes as you said that we forget about you know these small details of you know for example what a stage manager is doing or somebody who's helping with the backstage uh, it's very important to acknowledge them because they're really important in a play and that's what and 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 you know hence the uh, thing is created with the whole teamwork when everybody comes together and the and that's how the magic is generated and and one more important thing we just spoke about so अगर कॉस्ट्यूम डिजाइनर अलग है या सॉरी लाइट डिजाइनर अलग है इंडिविजुअल है या कॉस्ट्यूम एक्टर्स के साथ हो रहा है मिलके बट इट्स रियली रियली इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द डायरेक्टर टू हैव दैट विजन एंड दैट क्लैरिटी बिकॉज अदरवाइज व्हाट हैपेंस मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम्स एंड आई हेयर दैट फ्रॉम लॉर्ड ऑफ दीज डिजाइनर्स कि यार डायरेक्टर को कुछ पता ही नहीं क्या क्या करना है या आधा पता है चाहे वो स्टैब्लिश हो या नया डायरेक्टर हो सो इट्स रियली इंपॉर्टेंट टू हैव दैट that clear vision there so i think uh, thanks uh, uh, sort of we are done with almost done with this third phase as well but before we go forward let me uh, do a quick rapid fire with you and i'll ask you a few questions and if you can answer that in one word or or a sentence or so uh, and you can you, i mean you have to give your examples one play with an excellent stage design okay um so the play which i have done is barf and the play re- which really blew my mind was phantom of the opera which i saw in london fantastic a play with phenomenal light design okay again the same two examples barf okay. and phantom of the opera a play with exceptional music score or sound design okay it will be unfair uh, if i take one name because there are so many okay take two <laughs> <laughs> okay so ratan theam ka 
एंटीगनी और एनी म्यूजिकल यू टेक फ्रॉम ब्रॉडवे राइट ओके अ प्ले विद द मोस्ट इनोवेटिव कॉस्ट्यूम डिजाइन आई हैव नॉट सीन द प्ले आई सीन द फिल्म but i think uh, peter brooks mahabharat all right we'll give that to you your favorite international play my favorite international play phantom of the opera your favorite indian play chekhav ki duniya by ranjit kapoor nice lovely and now one question out of celebus saurabh shukla an actor director or a playwright same thing hmm. it's just sort of shukla thank you sort of for this enlightening session it opened up many vistas of technique and thought for our attendees once again we'd like to thank the mahindras for their unstinted support for the arts and thank you all for being great participants a big thank you to bika ji a snacking partner for meta 2021 if you like this master class do spread the word and register on art gyan to explore more such courses currently the platform features courses by expert artists across seven streams art music dance theater wellness food and literature with a variety of substreams under each from hindustani vocals to folk instruments and from baking to dance therapy the aim is to offer exclusive courses that empower the audience and artists equally all these master classes will be available to view later on our meta facebook page and youtube channel please check out our website for more information and full schedule thank you once again